Well, grace, mercy, and peace be to you, beloved of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we rejoice and are glad in it. Welcome to the 10th night of our Kingdom First Revival all through 2020 on the first day of the month, making kingdom priority, making kingdom sacrifice. We come into the presence of the Lord uh, and he revives us. And let me tell you what we all know. God has kept us all year long and he has kept us through the pandemic. He has kept us in spite of civil and social unrest. And let me give you one more thing to put on that Sunday of celebration. He has kept us despite buffoonery at the highest tiers of leadership in this country. Because if you and I could make it through Tuesday night without losing our minds and losing all hope, that is because of the keeping power of God. With that said, won't you go with me in your Bibles to Psalm 29, which will serve as our call to worship on this 10th night of our year long Kingdom First Revival. Psalm 29, a Psalm of David. I'm going to read it in your hearing, but you can feel free to read right along with me at home. And I'm going to give you a few more seconds just to find it on your device to turn the pages of your paper bi paper Bible. I'm going to be an OG tonight. I'm actually read out of the paper Bible. And trust me, whether it's a digital font or whether it's the printed book, watch this. The power and message of the word of God does not change and it translates to life for you and me. Psalm 29, give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The glory of God thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Yes, the Lord splinters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes them also skip like a calf. Lebanon and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The voice the Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare. And his temple, everyone says glory. The Lord sat enthroned at the flood and the Lord sits as king forever. The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. It's that last verse that I want you to give great acclamation. Lift your hands and receive it now. The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The Lord's going to give you and I strength to make it through these remaining 30 some odd days until the election. We, he's giving us strength to make it and to cast our votes. And he's going to bless us with peace that long after the last ballot is cast, we will know God has worked all things together for good. And we'll declare with a whole new shade. Thanks be to God that gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Won't you pause now with me in a word of prayer as we look to God and to hear his voice uh, through the word of God tonight. Eternal and all wise God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we come before you on this Thursday evening and we come with grateful and glad hearts. Thank you for blessing us uh, to see each and every day of the month of September. Thank you for your faithfulness, for your brand new mercies, new every morning. Thank you for your steadfast love that endured through even the difficult days and moments of September. Thank you for being God all by yourself, that though you sit high, you never ever are distanced from us, but you are the very present help in our time of need, in our time of trouble 
And if it wasn't enough that you saved our souls, if it wasn't enough that you forgave us of our sin, we thank you this night that you've given us joy unspeakable and you put laughter in our souls and you've extended our days. On this first day of October, we invoke your presence where each of your children stands or sits at this very moment. Make that space sacred space. Manifest yourself and let each one be able to testify that in your presence is fullness of joy at your right hand or pleasures forevermore, regardless of what has gone on, regardless of what is going on right now. We invoke your presence and ask you to have your way. Speak to us powerfully through the word tonight, even as the psalmist declared, let your voice through your servant cause the, the cedars to be split, for the ground to quake, for our problems to be dismantled, and our breakthroughs to be made evident. Revive us again. Fill each heart with your love. Give us strength. Give us peace, even as you've promised to do. We love, honor, and adore you, and we thank you that you hear and you answer every prayer and you do it tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, beloved, it is a joyous privilege on this 10th night of our Kingdom First Revival uh, for me to have sharing with us uh, Pastor Danielle Brown, Reverend Dr. Danielle L. Brown, uh, sharing with us. She is the pastor of Congregational Life at Cathedral International, where our beloved apostolic father, Bishop Donald Hilliard Jr., is the senior pastor. I feel so overjoyed tonight uh, to present her as our revival preacher, because this is one of the few times where I say it with great pride and no shame. I, I watched Danielle grow up into a woman in, in ministry and as a force of the kingdom. When I met her, she was a, a, a teenager, uh, very active in the life of the church, a leader, and the gifts were just hanging off of her like ornaments on a tree. And I'm thanking God that he's allowed me to live, to see the evolution, the, com the becoming of Danielle. And I am honored that on this 10th night, uh, on this 10th night, we've been going for 10 months and 10 is the number of redemption. So they tell me, and because 10 is the number of redemption, I'm thanking God for the redemptive word that will be preached through his servant tonight. She doesn't come to us a novice. She is trained uh, in uh, the spirit and mantle of our uh, our spiritual father, she has trained her mind uh, and she understands very well uh, what my father in ministry taught me. The more you give God to work with, the more God can yield through your life and your ministry. I want you to sit in your tent door tonight and pray for her, pray with her that the word of God might consume us one and all that where you are right now, watch this, might be sacred space and supernatural occurrences take place as the word of God goes forth from his servant, Reverend, Dan Reverend Dr. Danielle L. Brown. Now I'm gonna bring her on in just a moment, but y'all know in our church tradition, uh, we, uh, we always have a sermonic and uh, your bishop, running in here to get set for service tonight. Uh, Y'all know what I didn't do. I didn't set the sermonic to go forth. So I'm going to keep talking uh, and um, and we're going to put up the sermonic as soon as I locate it right here on said uh, computer. Don't worry. I'm almost uh, there. I'm almost there. Okay. And I want you to just turn and look at your neighbor real quick and say, he's almost there. There's a blessing coming your way and mine tonight. Uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, what am I trying to say? Judah sound is going to set the table, uh, so that we might in fact be blessed by the word of God tonight. All right. The next voice you will hear after uh, the singing of our sermonic selection by our uh, wonderful uh, praise team, Judah Sound, will be that of the Reverend Danielle L. Brown. Hear the servant of God and be blessed. <laughs> My 
Let's all welcome the Reverend Dr. Danielle L. Brown as she brings the word of the Lord tonight. Preach the word, woman of God. Preach the word. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Bishop, so much for this opportunity to share. 
uh, tonight. I want to give a shout out to the gift. It is so good to be with you even uh, virtually. Uh, I just thank God for Bishop Harvin, Pastor Lisa Harvin, uh, two incredible gifts to the kingdom of God and examples and blessings to my life. And so I am grateful uh, tonight to share with you for this time of revival. Let us have a word of prayer. Almighty God, we thank you so much for your grace and for your mercy, for your loving kindness that is better to us than life itself. Lord God, we ask tonight that you would meet us in this preaching moment, that Lord, you would sanctify this word, that you would make it your own, that you would not allow any of your precious people to suffer because of the humanity of this preacher. But God, will you stand up in me that from where I am to wherever this broadcast may land, that your people are edified, they are encouraged, they are empowered and excited to run on and do your work in ways that will turn this world upside down and not for any glory of our own, but only for the glory of the one who is, who was, and always will be. And his name is Jesus. And it's in that name that we pray and let all God's people say, amen. Go ahead and type amen in the comments. This is going to be an interactive uh, preaching experience. If you have your Bibles, kingdom people, would you go with me to Judges, the second chapter? And in Judges, the second chapter, uh, we will read uh, verses seven through 10. And then we're going to jump over um, to the third chapter and I'll read verses one through six. I have paper Bible too. Uh, Bishop, I'm, I'm old school. I, I just feel like I need the paper Bible. That, that this, is, this, is, this is just oil on the paper Bible. So anyhow, uh, Judges, the second chapter, verses seven through 10, the word of the Lord reads this way. So the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord, which he had done for Israel. And the Lord had done for Israel. Now, Joshua, the son of Nun, the Lord died when he was 110 years old. And they buried him with, within the border of his inheritance at the Timnath Harris in the mountains of Ephraim on the north side of the Mount Gash. When all that generation had been gathered to their fathers, another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord, nor the work which he had done for Israel. Uh, chapter three, verse one. Now these are the nations which the Lord left that he might test Israel by them. That is, all who had not known any of the wars in Canaan. This was only so that the generations of the children of Israel might be taught to know war, at least those who had not formerly known it, namely five lords of the Philistines, all of the Canaanites, the Sidonians, and the Hivites who dwelt in Mount Lebanon, from Mount Baal, Hermon, to the entrance of Hamath. And they were left that he might test Israel by them to know whether they would obey the commandments of the Lord, which he had commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. Thus the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And they took their daughters to be their wives and gave their daughters to their sons and they served their gods. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Kingdom people, kingdom impact. Kingdom impact is on the line. That's what I want to talk about tonight. Kingdom impact is on the line. The Old Testament narrative of the children of Israel is fascinating. Uh, it's a story of triumphs and trials of pain and perseverance, down moments and destiny, dumb decisions and deliverance, uh, a story of God's commitment to keep his covenant with a people that God hand selected to be in relationship with. See, God gave them very simple instructions. Love me, fear me, serve me. I get to be your God. And while you're at it, treat each other right. As a result of God's choice of them, they had a promise. But on the flip side, as a result of God's choice of them, they had some problems too. 
Uh, much like many of us today, that God has chosen us to occupy some promised places, some places that we could not have chosen for ourselves. In fact, there are some things that not only could we not have chosen them for ourselves, we didn't have the capacity to imagine them. And where we are right now is because God and God alone promised it and was faithful to his promise. But in the meantime, and on the flip side, these same promises have resulted in some problems. See, everybody loved you when you were in the entry level position. But the moment that you started climbing the corporate ladder, your friends became your enemies. Problems that you were still on crack and your family members talked about you, but at least they were kind. They even loaned you money and let you sleep on their couch. But the moment that you cleaned up and you got yourself together and you started uh, being committed to the church, all of a sudden, those same people have flipped the script. Suddenly you're holier than thou and you think that you're better than everybody else. See, problems. You, you never knew that even right in the church, not your church, but but you know, there's some people in some churches who, who witnessed you and discipled you and welcomed you in the door on the first day. The moment that you started getting strong in the faith and the moment uh, that God uh, uh, spoke to your leader concerning you uh, was somewhere calling your name and gave you responsibility and some authority, who knew that those same people would turn in to the people that they once warned you about, problems. And so the story of the children of Israel is filled with promise and problems and problems, inhabitants in land and enemies and frenemies at every turn that were intended to fully keep them from settling in their kingdom promise. But it's also a story of a God who was on their side, I thank God. It's also a story of a God who was on their side. It's also a story of a God who was so committed in his covenant with these people that he just would not let up. But there's a condition for their survival. God gave them very simple instructions. I already told you it was love me, fear me, serve me. I get to be your only God while you're at it. Treat each other right. It takes Israel a long time to get it, but eventually they do. Uh, eventually they make it to the promised land and their disregard for their covenant with God lands them in bondage in Egypt, but God delivers them. But the consequences of their murmuring and complaining about what God had done while God was busy keeping their, being their everything in the wilderness resulted in no one who was over the age of 21 when they left Egypt, Moses included, making it into the promised land, except their wise leader, Joshua and Caleb, their optimistic cheerleader, because they had a different spirit. And by the time we get to Judges, 20 some odd years has passed since jo Joshua has succeeded Moses. And by this point, it has been almost 20 years since they've had to go to war uh, to drive out the inhabitants of the land. At this point, they've gotten comfortable in the land for which they did not labor and the cities they did not build. And they were happy eating off the vineyards and the olive groves that they did not plant. And they were indeed serving the Lord because our text says that the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, who had seen all the works which he had done for Israel. But here is the tension. If the people serve the Lord, are y'all ready? I need you to get ready because I need you to hear this. That, that here's the tension. If the people served the Lord, how was it possible that when that generation died, or as the text so poetically puts it, was gathered to their fathers, how is it that the next generation arose and not only did they not know the Lord, they were clueless about what God had done for them? <laughs> that the problem was this. The very promise they were occupying was also promised to the generation that would come behind them. And God made it very clear that there were specific circumstances by which they would remain in the promise and in the good graces and favor of God. Love me, fear me, serve me. I get to be your only God. And while you're at it, treat each other right. See, all these years you've been in the promised land and you've been serving the Lord just like your covenant called for, but a whole generation behind you does not know God or what God 
has done? And how could they serve a God that they do not know? And how will they know a God that they have not been told about? How can they love a God that they have no history with? After all that God has done, uh, how good God has been, Israel's kingdom impact was on the line because while they were enjoying the promise of God, they neglected to consider the people coming behind them. Let me say that again. Their impact was on the line because while they were enjoying the promise of God, they neglected to consider the people who were coming behind them. May I suggest to you tonight that it isn't always uh, the reality and presence of our problems that puts our kingdom impact on the line. But what jacks us up is our familiarity with the promise. Did y'all catch that? It's not always problems as much as it is our familiarity with the promise. We're so used to being blessed that we forget to give God props who is the blesser. We're used to sitting wherever we want on the bus, patronizing whatever restaurants and attending whatever schools we choose uh, that we don't consider at any given moment that the script can flip. And so we don't tell the story of a God who has sustained us throughout history. We're used to being saved and sanctified and living our best life so much so that we conveniently forget what it was like before we were saved and we made crazy and foolish and dumb decisions. And so we judge instead of love, set rules instead of build relationship. And we're so used to being in leadership positions that the people loving us and regarding us and reverencing us that we forget that they are God's people. They are God's people and God's people alone. And while as leaders, we may do wonderful things, the church belongs to Jesus and Jesus is the church. And so what happens after we go in the words of Biggie Smalls from ashy to classy, we get so familiar with the promise that we bump God right out of the story. And so this is where Israel was. A whole generation served God. They, they served him and it was only good for sustaining them, for keeping the wrath of God for them, a whole generation. And we can go through the motions and still do our religious exercises and call it serving God. But if our serving and doing only sustains us in our promised state, then I have to tell you, it really is not serving God at all because there is nothing about this Christian journey that is just about you. Nothing about this Christian journey that's just about me. The promises of God are to every generation and the legacy of the saints and the kingdom impact that we are called to have on, on, on the world is for every generation. And I want to say that in 2020, our impact is on the line. We can sit back and use the biggest cop out statement of the century that it's a new day and they just don't make saints like they used to. As if God is making people any differently than God has always made people. And so what we do is blame our lack of impact on the defectiveness of a generation of people. But could it be that the reason folks aren't getting saved and sanctified and delivered and filled with the Holy Ghost is because we are so comfortable in our place of promise that we no longer do the things that someone did to get us here. So comfortable with the place of promise that going back into the trenches and engaging someone who is just like I used to be is a hardship and something I, I just am not going to do. I mean, after God has met our needs and after God has brought us out and we've come into our Canaan when the times are no longer desperate and dangerous proximity seems so far away, what place does God have among us? We start out needing God and relying on God. But once God has done what we ask and has done it for a while, what happens to the sense of urgency to be in the will of God? What happens to the intensity with which we seek God? We used to press our way to prayer and weekly Bible study and then go home. Now we can't press our way. We just press our way to the living room or to, to whatever electronic device we're going to log on to now. But, but nevertheless, we pressed. But God answered our prayers. And so, you know, now we're good. 
when we used to tithe and sow seed when we were desperate for God's hand. But now that God has done that thing and now that we are comfortable in that thing, uh, uh, now, now that we don't really need God's hand, we forget that we still need God's heart. We get comfortable. And when urgency turns to complacency and that intensity turns to inertia, our kingdom impact is on the line. And for Israel and for us, if we don't watch it, the result will be a whole generation without a clue or a care. And I'm not just talking about millennials, because can I tell y'all, we're old. Millennials are old now. We're turning 40. And, and so, so we can't just be concerned about millennials. At some point, we, we've got to be concerned about the generations that are coming behind us. And can I say this? Our websites won't do it. Social media presence won't get it. Flashy lights and colors won't do it either. Dress down, dress up, high fashion, low fashion. None of these shallow methods are enough. The only thing that will keep the generation and take our impact off the line is God and God alone. The one who created all of these things that we call our own God and God alone, who reveals the truth of all that we call unknown God and God alone, who is fit to take the universe's throne. And so if we're going to have or preserve our kingdom impact for generations, uh, first, we cannot uh, get so familiar with the promise and comfortable in the place of promise that we neglect to keep the Lord at the center of our conversation. We've got to talk less about ourselves and what we've done and what we've achieved and how wonderfully we do things and how people should be more like us because we're wonderful and talk more about the God who made your wonderful possible. Keep the Lord at the center of your conversation also means that we watch what we say. And I know that we're entitled to our opinions, but sometimes the expression of our opinion is more destructive than it is constructive. Can you imagine the children of Israel getting to a critical place in their journey and dialing into a conference call talking about, well, I remember back in the days when Moses was leading and he had a stick that used to be a snake and Joshua doesn't even have a stick. Uh, but ever since Moses died, I, I knew I should have left when Joshua was marching around that wall, had us marching around that wall seven times. I, I should have left this group then. Or I don't know why Moses picked Joshua and not Caleb. Uh, Caleb was a better choice in my opinion. He was the one that said, let us go up at once. And I knew I grew up with his daddy nun and, and I think that he would have been a better choice. See, impact is on the line. And perhaps the reason the folks we are hoping will come into the kingdom of God aren't trying to know God and aren't studying his church because they've heard more destructive opinions about God's will and God's people from his people than they can cope with. And unfortunately, the impressions people are given about God's people and God's church shape their impressions of God. And when God is not at the center of our conversation, he also he will also not be at the center of our communities, which leaves the integrity of the entire faith community shaky. Our, our kingdom impact is on the line and we can't get so familiar with the promise that we allow our personal commitment to God to become contingent upon the presence or function of any person or people. See, as long as Joshua and the elders lived, the people served the Lord. If you can only show up to church when the bishop is there or when someone extends to you a special invitation, then you're too comfortable. If you can only serve the Lord, right, do the works of the Lord when the church is able to gather in person. And, 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 you know, before social distancing, that, that now we're, we're in this season of pandemic and social distancing and, and, and you can't serve God. Now you forgot that you were saved because the church is not open. If that's you, then you have gotten too comfortable. If you can't worship unless a certain person is leading, if you can't learn unless a certain person is, is teaching or preaching, then you've got to learn to go in all by yourself. You are too comfortable. If you're only saved on Sunday when people are looking, but the moment you hit the door, you get behind closed doors, your other side comes out, you are too comfortable. 
See, kingdom impact is on the line, y'all. I don't know, you might have come for a different kind of sermon tonight, but 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 I got to obey God that when I log off of this, I got to go still be with the Lord the rest of my life. And, and so I'd rather answer to him than, than you know, anything else. But, but kingdom impact is on the line. And so no matter uh, who is here and who isn't here, no, no matter uh, the situation or the condition, if God has called you to serve uh, wherever and whatever it is, my brothers and my sisters, you've got to be faithful to that assignment because while our corporate impact is on the line, we will all one day have to stand before a holy God and give an individual account for our corporate contribution. Also, we can't be so familiar with the promise that we allow ourselves to turn our heroes into our gods. See, remember that any great thing that has been done through a man or woman has only been done by the power of God. And just like God raised up Moses to be a deliverer and then raised up Joshua to carry them into the promised land, God can raise up anyone at any time and do the miraculous through them. And if you're not too mean, and if you're not too hot, you you it could very well be you. It, it could very well be you. You could be the one. Matter of fact, it could be the person that you've already written off as someone that because you don't like them, you think that God can't use them. Uh, but 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 today I want you to know that that God can use anybody, anybody. God can raise up anybody to do the miraculous. But no matter how great a thing God does through them or through a person, we aren't God. We start out needing and relying on God and then God does it and we turn our allegiance to the people God has chosen to lead us. Did y'all catch that? that? That we start out relying and needing God and then God does the thing and next thing we know, instead of honoring God, we become hopelessly devoted or turn those leaders into idols. We spend more time, what does that look like? We spend more time trying to impress people and satisfy people than we do trying to impress and satisfy and love God. And listen, we don't do ourselves or anybody else a favor by making idols out of other folk. That while we're enjoying the promise in order to guard our kingdom impact for generations to come, here's the last thing I'm going to tell you is we've got to keep our story straight. Why do we have to keep the story straight? Because the, our impact is directly tied to the truth of who God is and the testimony of the things that God has done. Tell the truth about who God is and what God has done. Here's the truth. Our God is one God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. He is the uncaused cause, and there never was a time when he was not. God loved the world so much that God gave his only son that whoever would believe in that son would not perish but have everlasting life. And God's son, his name is Jesus. And Jesus and his father were one. Jesus was born fully human and fully God. And while we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. We have to keep the story straight. And though Jesus died, Jesus did not stay dead. But instead, while he was dead all day Friday, all day Saturday, y'all know the story. Uh, one Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. And now there is no other name by which men, women, boys or girls can be saved. Even if the world says otherwise, even if other traditions say otherwise, we have got to stand flat footed and say, I am neither afraid nor ashamed to say that my story is straight. This is my story and I am sticking to it because our kingdom impact is in, on the line. And so a generation arose. It arose in after them who did not know the Lord. A generation arose who did not know the work that God had done for Israel. And so Israel made it to the promise and they got comfortable there. They served God like they promised, but in all of their serving, they failed to connect the people coming behind them who basically only knew the promise to the God of the promise. Did you catch that? They failed to connect the people coming behind them who basically only knew the promise to the God of the promise. 
But here's the last thing we've got to guard ourselves against if we're going to have a lasting kingdom impact. Uh, we've got, I know I told you the last thing, but y'all know I'm Baptist. And so, so the last thing was the, you know, the first last thing. Here's the last thing. We've got to resist the temptation to be done before God is finished. See, for Joshua and the elders of Israel, it had been a long, long road. They had been in bondage in Egypt. They ran for their lives. They spent 40 years in the wilderness and that was stressful. They, they now have had over 20 years in Canaan land. The first seven of those years they spent at war fighting and driving out the inhabitants and the people who were living in their promised land. They had been in this thing for a long time and they had some evidence of their years of service, kind of like some of us. You, you've been serving uh, since back in the day when you had to go to serve in communion. You've been a deacon since you know you had to go to the bodega and get the communion and pour it into the tiny cups long before you could just order the stuff prepackaged. Some of y'all been visiting nursing homes before. You're visiting people in nursing homes that you used to visit in the maternity ward when they had their first babies. And it would seem like now is a good time to be done. It would seem that that now is a good time to just check out because you've been on the battlefield, you've been in the wilderness, you've been faithful, and it seems like you've done your part, but we've got to resist the urge to be done before God is finished. You may not be able to run like you used to run, and you maybe you can't go like you used to go, but our kingdom impact is on the line and we need you. There is a generation that is coming who needs you, who needs the voice of the season, uh, a generation. Uh, and then there will be a generation that comes after that generation who also will need to know the Lord and need to know about the things that our God has done. And why do we need you? Because if you go over to Judges in the third chapter, you will find that there are still some inhabitants in the land that, that although, did y'all catch that? I read the text before I started talking about all this stuff, but, but if you go to judges three, here's why we need every generation and we need every person. It's because in judges three, we find that there are still some inhabitants in the land that, that although they had been enjoying the promise there remain some Philistines, Canaanites, some Sidonians, some Hivites, some Hittites, and some Amorites. In fact, the Lord left them there specifically for the next generation of Israelites so that those who did not know war would be able to learn how to fight. See, there were still, the Bible said it, I, I'm not making it up. There, there were still inhabitants in the land so that God could test the children of Israel to see if they would obey his commandments in the presence, uh, in the absence of their fathers. The instructions were to drive out all of the inhabitants of the land. So we can't get comfortable now. There are still enemies in the land. There are still some nations that Joshua did not get rid of and you can't get rid of, but the generation coming behind us all is handpicked to finish the job. I know that you're tired. I know that it's been a long road, but if you're done before God is finished, you will leave a whole generation to fend for themselves. <laughs> and we need some folks who will commit to bridging gaps to protect our kingdom impact across generations. We need some folks who will commit to bridging gaps to protect our generational legacy. And I wonder today, is there anyone tonight at this kingdom revival who will say, I refuse to allow a generation to rise after me who does not know the Lord or the things that the Lord has done because God has been too good for me to allow a, a generation that I have influence with, a generation uh, that, that, that my path crossed with to not know the goodness of the Lord. Uh, where are the saints tonight? Get in the comments and say, Dr. Brown, it's me. Here I am. Here I am. Uh, who will say, I want my church. I want the gift. I want Cathedral International. I want, I saw, I saw you, Bishop. I, I want the Holy Ghost Cathedral uh, uh, to have impact that is generational because I have a legacy and every one of my generations has an inheritance with the saints. And Peter put it this way. I feel this in my spirit and inheritance 
inheritance that is incorruptible, undefiled, and that does not fade away. And it's reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation. And is there anybody out there tonight who will say, I refuse to get so comfortable enjoying the promise for myself that I neglect to equip and empower those coming behind me with the tools to sustain the promise. Kingdom impact might be on the line, but not on my watch. Where are the folks who know something about God? The folks tonight who, who will speak of the Lord, who will testify of the great things that God has done, who will declare that God has been good and God's mercy endures forever. The folks who have a testimony that great is his faithfulness and all I have ever needed, his hand has provided and everything that I am, everything I will ever be is because of the Lord. Can I get some real saints tonight who don't mind testifying that you were in sin, but God gave you Jesus. That once your heart was broken, but God put the pieces back together again. Somebody testified that you were sick, but God was your healer. Uh, sometimes in this life, you were all by yourself, but God was a friend who stood closer than a brother. Or anybody have this testimony? When the enemy came in like a flood, the Lord raised up a standard against them that, that when there was no way, God made a way. When I was unkeepable and didn't want to be kept. The Lord kept me. Is there anybody who will say, I'm going to tell the story so that every generation knows my God and the things that my God has done until everybody knows that God is God and beside him, there is none other. And I'm going to stay right here. This is key. People will say, I am going to stay right here until every generation is trained for battle. I'm going to stay on my post doing what I can, how much I can, uh, when I can, uh, so that uh, everybody who is coming behind me or so that I know until I know that every generation is equipped to go into the enemy's camp and take back what belongs to God's people. See, kingdom impact is on the line. But tonight I just stopped by to ask if any of you are going to do something about it. Kingdom Impact is on the line. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Well, glory to the name of our God. Thank you, Pastor Danielle, for that powerful word. Kingdom Impact is on the line. Thank God. Thank That was rich right there. That was rich. To God be the glory. Thank I, you, I echo, the, I echo the words of Tiffany. Just go right on in. Just go right on in. Amen. Thank God for the word tonight. And we pause at this moment uh, to give you, Pastor, the opportunity to extend an invitation to those who might be watching who have not yet uh, put their lives in the hand of God uh, and uh, to become a part of the generation of new fighters, new warriors for the sake of the kingdom. Well, tonight, I just want to give you the opportunity to make Jesus your own. Uh, the 27th of September in 1992, I made the choice to give my life to Jesus Christ. Uh, 20 some odd years later, 28 years later, it is the best decision that I've ever made. I, I, tonight, I want you to know that we serve a God who is able a God who strength gives us strength when we're weary, a God who becomes all things that we need uh, so that we can make it through, a God who makes all things brand new. Scripture tells us that in order to be saved, there's two things that scripture tells us, that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, that's one way. Scripture also says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so it doesn't say, whoever has all of their ducks in a row. It doesn't say whoever dresses a certain way or talks a certain way. It doesn't say whoever is without sin can be saved. As a matter of fact, sin is, is what qualifies us for salvation. It's sin that makes us need salvation. We all are sinners. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But tonight I want to give you the opportunity that maybe you heard the word you heard what I preached and you're saying, I want to be a part of the generation that trains up a generation of leaders to walk in their promise, a generation of people 
who will walk in all of the things that God has for them. If that's you tonight, I wanna invite you to give your life to Jesus Christ. Will you pray this prayer with me? Just repeat it after me. Dear Lord, here I am. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I acknowledge that I need you in my life. And so God, tonight I ask you to come into my life, to save me, make me brand new. And God, while you save me, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Empower me to do your work in the earth. God, I thank you that as of tonight, old things have passed away and I am a new creature because you have saved me. God, I thank you for saving me. If you prayed that prayer tonight and that was your first time praying a prayer like that and you believe the prayer, can you just jump in the comments and say, I gave my life to the Lord tonight and someone from Gift will reach out to you. They'll just slide in your DMs and highlight you, give you some more information about the church or how to connect uh, virtually or even uh, with a church that's in your area. It's important that, that you know that there's nothing that can separate you from the love of God. I mean nothing. I don't care what mistakes you've made in your life, what decisions you made. I don't care what decisions your people have been telling you all your life that you're just like your mama, you're just like your dad. Whatever negative things people have said as of tonight, those things are broken. They're broken off of your life. And you need to know that if you have given your life to Christ tonight, that all things are brand new for you and your future is bright. Old things have passed away and behold, here you stand brand new. Our God is so faithful. And so I celebrate you for making the decision to give your life to Jesus tonight. Someone, please make sure that you jump in the comments so that someone from Gift can reach out to you and give you the information for discipleship and what the next steps will be. Um, and I thank God for you. Let's just have a word of prayer for everybody. Almighty God, we thank you so much for this night. We thank you, Lord God, for the reminder that our kingdom impact is on the line, but also, Lord God, for the assurance that we can do something about it. God, tonight I pray for every person who is watching this broadcast, every person who is participating in this revival. God, I ask that you would give them a fresh wind, a fresh anointing, that you would revive them indeed, Lord God, that you would begin to stir up the gifts that are on the inside of them, that you would begin, Lord God, to rekindle the fire of the Holy Ghost on the inside of them. That God, even in the midst of a pandemic, that you would cause revival to break out in Baltimore and in New Jersey and in uh, D Detroit and wherever, Lord God, they're uh, assigning in from tonight. God, I ask that you would show up and show up strong, give rest to the weary, Give strength to the to those, Lord God, that strength is failing. Lord God, lift hung down heads and strengthen feeble knees. Lord God, tonight I ask that you would heal bodies, that you would deliver, that you would have mercy even on this nation, Lord God, that you would convict hearts that need convicting and that you would strengthen hearts that need strengthening, that Lord, you would show your mighty hand in our midst and not for our own glory, but God, so that we can share with generations to come the stories of your goodness. God, give us more stories. As we serve you, God, I ask that you would give us more stories, more stories of the miraculous, more stories of how you have uh, showed up and turned things around on behalf of your people, the way that you've released provision and worked miracles and signs and wonders in our midst. God, you've done it before. We're asking that you do it again. God, give us stories to tell the generation to come. And Lord, we love you and we bless you and we thank you. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' holy and matchless name. And let all God's people say, amen. Amen. And thank God. Thank you, uh, Pastor Danielle. What a blessing it is to have had you with us tonight. And to all of you who made a decision for Jesus tonight, mark this day, the first day of October 2020, when the kingdom impact that was on the line reclaimed you. And now you stand on the front line 
of defense, declaring Jesus is Lord to the glory of God, the Father now and forevermore. Come on, Gift Nation, put it in your comments. Then you know how we do. Thank God for the preacher tonight. Thank God for the preached word. Thank God for the fruit of the word, for the word of the Lord has gone forth. We have heard the voice of God through his servant and she has preached and proclaimed with power and we are the better because of it. We appreciate you, Pastor Danielle. We appreciate you. We appreciate Thank you. you. I appreciate, appreciate you. I'm going to invite everyone now to take a few moments just before we dismiss from revival tonight to prepare yourselves to worship the Lord with your giving. Be a blessing now in the house of the Lord. Uh, to, we might be a blessing to God's servant who has spoken powerfully to us through the word and be a blessing to the household of faith known as the gift, the greater Emmanuel faith temple. All of the means by which you uh, can give will appear on your screen even now and want you to give sacrificially, give meaningfully, give with faith tonight. Uh, you know how I roll. It's the first day of the month. It's our kingdom first, kingdom priority revival. And each um, first day of the month this year, I've given a hundred dollars or greater. And I'm invite you tonight to do the same and uh, to meet me at, with at least $100 in your offering tonight. I'm going uh, way above 100 tonight because I'm believing God to do something miraculously, even the more in my life in this final quarter of 2020. It's the first day of the fourth quarter of 2020, and God has been faithfully amazing all year long, and I'm looking for God to be faithfully amazing and righteously ridiculous in my life in the closing 90 days of the year. And I don't know about you, I understand very clearly that the seed is what brings forth the harvest. The word of God tells us right there in the book of Genesis that as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. And guess what? God's going to give it back to us in this same year, 100 fold, because that's the principle. That's the promise. That's the development we see at Genesis 26 and 12. Isaiah sold Isaac, sowed a seed. And in that same year, God blessed Isaac 100 times more. Sow your seed tonight. And I want you to do so in faith, not because I asked you to, but because you believe God and knowing that the seed that you sow, God gave it to you in the first place. That's why he gives us seed so that we might sow, that he might release the harvest. Let me pray over your giving now, just before we dismiss eternal and all wise God. Thank you, Father, for this privilege tonight to be a blessing to your servant and to be a blessing to your storehouse. Receive the seed that we sow tonight in faith. We sow it with joyful hearts. We sow it with anticipatory joy. For we know, oh God, that the seed that we sow tonight, you nourish it, you water it, and you cause it to flourish. And on this first day of October, we thank you for the favor that you release and the harvest that you bring so that the latter will be greater than the former and the end will be better than the rest. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, beloved, we've been blessed by the word of the Lord tonight so powerfully. And again, we express our gratitude to Reverend Dr. Danielle L. Brown uh, for sharing the word of the Lord uh, in such a rich and powerful way tonight. Uh, we extend gratitude to her pastor, our uh, common spiritual father, Bishop Donald Hilliard Jr., for releasing her to share the word of the Lord with us tonight. And with that said, go now into the 10th month of the year, knowing that as you live, you live with a passion, you live with a commitment, you keep the story straight, because we know the kingdom impact is on the line. Let me declare a word of benediction for you now. I speak to you just as Moses spoke to Aaron and Aaron spoke to the people, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you. God make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. God grant you his peace. Now, henceforth and even forevermore, we declare, decree that it is so now in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And in one voice, we all say, amen. You've come to worship now, leave, revive, ready to serve. And remember, you are the gift. 
I can't hear you. You are the gift. I can't hear you. You are the gift. And guess what? We are the gift nation. Have a sweet night in Jesus. We love you, but God loves you best.